Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be going into what is technically part two of my creative process. On Monday, we talked about my sketching process, and today we're going to talk more about the planning and actual execution of our final piece, starting with color swatching. Now, when I grabbed the particular palette that I did, I had this specific color in mind already. I believe this pinkish color is Rose Matter Dore Lake from Sennelier. It's a single pigment color and I was thinking of it already when I was working on this piece and already knew that I wanted to include it. I have two separate swatches here. One is the color straight by itself and the other is the color mixed with a cool yellow. I believe it's Bismuth Yellow by M. Graham, which is a really creamy cool yellow and I wanted to kind of test out these cooler and warmer mixes with that red. The other main color that I wanted to include was a blue. So I have several blues in this palette and decided to just swatch pretty much all of them to kind of see what I thought went best. We have Cerulean Blue Chromium, I believe, and the second one is probably Turquoise by M. Graham. The third one is Inden Throne Blue by M. Graham, I think, maybe. And the fourth one is Indigo by Sennelier, I think. Yes. <laughs> you can see my fingerprint showed up a bit in the swatches. That's just because I had been touching the paper before swatching, and this paper definitely does not like oils, and I'm sure all papers are that way. Once I had my swatches down, I thought it would be fun to date this page. And as I mentioned in my last video, some of these products are from Banggood, including this neat stamper. It has letters and numbers all the way around for each different character slot. So you can adjust that to have individual words. I'm gonna be using mine for a date here. And I think it's a really interesting tool. I, it's really pretty simple in how it functions and how it works. And I like that. I didn't have to try to figure out how to use it or anything like that. And I feel like it gives a really nice effect to the page overall once we have our swatches down and everything. Down in the bottom, those blue swatches, I was checking to see how much water these brushes held. You may have noticed in the beginning the two large sets of brushes. Those came together as one 24 brush set from Banggood also and I'm going to be using those brushes for most of the piece here. The one set is 12 filberts and the other one is 12 angled brushes. As far as the range of sizes for these brushes, they go up numerically starting from 1 and going up to 12. So you literally have every number between 1 and 12 and to be honest I think that this brush set could have been more effective if I, even if I had just a third of them. So, you know, something small, something smallish and towards the middle, a middle-sized brush, and then the largest one. I think they were going for the quantity appeal as opposed to having a more balanced set, because I definitely don't need all one through 12 brushes to get things done. Filbert or cat tongue brushes, and the angled brushes are ones I have been wanting to incorporate more. And they don't hold a ton of water for watercolors because they're synthetic, especially considering the fact that I'm used to my calligraphy brushes, which are natural hair brushes and hold a ton of water. But I'm expecting that these particular brushes will work really well for gouache, as I do tend to prefer synthetic brushes when working with that particular medium. Let's talk a little bit more about this piece. I decided to keep it small and relatively simple. I knew that if I made this piece even larger, I would be tempted to have too many details and might lose the overall flow and color balance sort of layout composition thing that I was looking for in this piece, so I kept it small. And I really enjoyed working on this one. I wanted cool, dark colors around the background. I wanted the figure to overall be fairly cool, but with some slightly warmer tones, which is why I included a bit more turquoise. 
and then the leaf I want it to stand out just a bit more on its own but still have a bit of transparency so I used that pink mix that we talked about earlier on and I did end up going with a mix that had a bit more yellow in it to get sort of a dusty almost salmon pink that I really like I'm really glad that I decided to keep this one a bit smaller as it allowed me to kind of think in larger blocks of values. So there were some areas specifically of the figure that I knew I wanted to be darker, like the face and the fingertips and the toes. And because I didn't allow this to get too big, I was able to just kind of block those colors in and keep it a bit more abstract and rather simple. It made this piece really fun and low stress and enjoyable to work on. So that was just overall just a really nice experience. I actually worked on this piece over the course of a couple days just because I only did a little bit one day and then some the next day. And when I went to work on it the second day, I forgot about using the brushes from Banggood and I just instantly grabbed my favorite little size one quill brush from AliExpress that we've talked about before and uh, kind of forgot about using the other ones. <laughs> I kept the color pretty simple overall. I knew I wanted to add more texture with black lines and I also ended up going in with pencil at the very end to add a bit more hatching and texture and things like that. For the figure I used the smaller brush pen and these brush pens are not waterproof so if I had put the lines down first and then tried to paint over them that color would have just smeared. So I intentionally did the color first and then the lines afterward. I find that the lines are a bit more organic and flowing this way. Sometimes you can lose structure when you do your lines after the painting, but I really enjoyed it. After those lines, I went in with one of those 2B mechanical pencils just to add a bit more texture to the figure. The last thing I did was to add a bit more interest to the background. To keep it simple, I just took the larger brush pen and added in some sort of abstract tree or branch or foresty shapes. I feel like this really reinforces the overall mood of the piece and gives it kind of a tint of darkness, if that makes sense. I wanted the figure to portray a sense of innocence and maybe insecurity, but in a setting that might be uncomfortable. So I decided to add darker colors and then these black lines in the background to kind of reinforce the overall mood I was going for. It was a pretty simple concept and I basically went with the first thing that I thought of as far as composition and the storytelling of this piece. And I'm really happy that I went with the first thing that came to mind and I'm sure I could have elaborated or kind of restructured the concept a bit, but it was a lot of fun keeping it simple. And I really enjoyed the simplicity and ease of working on the piece overall. Here's a quick look at everything I got from Banggood, and I didn't talk a ton about those metal clips. I really like them for holding my pages when I'm doing some light swatching or painting. I might even use them to hold up pieces that I'm planning to like hang on the walls, and they have a really pretty like rose gold sort of color, and I like them. I like them a lot. I'm going to leave links to all of the items that I used in this video down in the description so you guys can check them out. I hope you guys have enjoyed kind of a quick look into my creative process. Let me know if you guys have any questions or if you have anything that you do differently in your creative process. I definitely love to hear from you. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and I will talk to you next time. Thanks so much for watching guys. Bye!